my name is Scammy Hammy. It's a little bit different video today. I'm not doing a regular uh, regular playthrough or commentary or commentary over anything, but more so this is more of a personal video, I guess. Um, I told you guys to leave some questions on my YouTube and my Twitter, and I actually only got questions on my Twitter. So uh, I got five questions here, and I will read them off to, for you. And this will be kind of a Q&A video and just a podcast, basically. Um, I'm going to go through these questions first, and then I'll just talk about what, what, what's been going on with Scammy Hammy in the past. This little open release holiday whatever or dealio thing. Yo. E. Um, all right. The question one is from Lightning. How did you get the name Lightning on Twitter? I'm pretty sure that would have been taken as soon as Twitter was invented. Okay, anyway. He says, what is your name? And um, my name is Luke, actually. L-U-K-E. Um, I usually don't like to say my name a lot because it rhymes with so many things. They're like, every time someone will say, look, or, you know, look. Hey, look, and I'm, I think they're saying my name, so I'm like, well, what? What do you want, buddy? But they're actually saying, like, hey, look, it's Luke. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, what? So it's that, and it, it rhymes with nuke, puke, duke, and it's a ton of different things. Um, all right. <laughs> yes, my name is Luke. I answered question one. Uh, my next question is from... I don't even know how to pronounce your name, buddy. What is that? An N. All right, your name is Naso. Naso no. Naso no. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'll put your name in the description, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Um. <laughs> P.S. Can I be in one of your videos? Uh, honestly. I I have no problem. I'm not like some guy that would play play games just by himself and record. I love playing with uh, other people. Uh, I like playing with other people that have a goal in what they're doing. I don't necessarily like people that uh, I'm playing with because nowadays, um, before I used to make YouTube videos all the time, uh, I would now with people know that I do YouTube videos because everyone is so famous on YouTube from videos. Um, it's like some of the higher up people, they think that my life revolves around YouTube. So they ask me tons of questions, and the game is never really played. I have no problem playing playing games uh, with uh, some viewers. I have a kind of a set number of people that I play with. I have absolutely no problem playing with you if you are um, over the age of like... 13. That might sound like I'm discriminating, but I simply cannot stand it, and it's for your own protection that I play with somebody that I can stand to play with. Um, basically, the only games that I would ever play with uh, some viewers is games like Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption, GTA, uh, and other funny games like that. I might play Gears of War or something like that. It's basically what I'm wanting at the moment. A, a plain co-op game? Probably not. Um, but every so often, if you follow me on Twitter, I will host open lobbies. If you want to play, I will put it on there. If you start following me on Twitter, you'll know when I'm doing open, lo open lobbies and you can play. And you'll be on YouTube. And you'll be like, oh my god, I'm on YouTube. Mom, get in here. Look, I'm on YouTube. I'm on a screen. And uh, then you get happy. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully that answers that question. Um, next question. From Three Little Men. It's a three. Nice. Good job, bro. Three Little Men. It's, oh, wait. No, it's Three Little Man. Three Little Man. Three th th the, no, the Little Man. Okay. The. The. Not the, but the. Um, <laughs> the crap, bro. He says, what is the best game that you've played in this year? Okay, um, the best game that I've played this year so far on, um, I, I have to kind of split these up into, um, whatever the best game in a certain genre that I've played this year 
but mainly how I do it is what game I've enjoyed the most. Uh, so far, I'm in love with Gears of War 3. Freaking love that game. It's so solid. Um, I've actually never played a Gears of War before. Uh, Gears of War 3, never played Gears of War 1, never played Gears of War 2. But uh, Gears of War 3, I'm really happy with. I always underestimated uh, Gears of War. I never really liked Cliff Brzezinski. Um if that's even how you pronounce his last name, uh, never really liked him just because of the fact that I was kind of a kind of a fanboy when I came to it because I never really liked Halo was basically the only science fiction or fu- I know Gears of War isn't like science fiction but it's more futuristic um, futuristic y part of the gaming and I'm, I've never really leaned toward that. I've went more toward uh, historical and actually valid information in video games. So, Gears of War 3 was a big shocker for me because the engine is so smooth. It's one of the best engines that I have ever seen. Um, the, the visual properties of that game are just so smooth. But the only, like, it has real emotion in it. It's not like a bunch of just laugh lines, you know, um, which I thought Gears of War was about. And I know the game is supposed to be gritty, but it's also gritty with an emotional feel to it. The You actually feel compassion for the characters, and that's what I think a good director makes of a video game. That's what I want to see in a video game, is that you're actually feeling immersed into the story. Which I'm sure a lot of people would ser- would share that same view. Um, one thing that I, do, that I like noticed, it's not really a bad thing, but you can notice that they're trying... To drift somewhere else with the gear, with the gears of war, like you can tell, you you can always tell in a video game when a developer or, um, it depends on which department they're in, whether it's just art or programming, you can tell what they're actually moving forward in doing. Say, in gears of war, they're uncomfortable uncomfortable with the environment that they're in, this stony like brown colored environment say they're wanting to move off like it you can tell by like say the mountains are extremely polished and they look so good or the water and valleys look really awesome or something or they put a lot of time into a cathedral or something that looks stony you can always tell where a developer a director is wanting the storyline to go and when it comes to art you can always tell where the artist is actually wanting to lean toward, um, say they're wanting to get out of the stony, post-apocalyptic thing and move into move into the mountains. Basically, uh, they're wanting to move move their art into the mountains, and you can tell that when you play the game by what is polished and what isn't. Um, but other than that, and you can actually tell what the artists are wanting. Uh, I love the game so much. Ten out of ten for me. I see no problems with it. Like, I honestly have no problem with it. Um, I love Beast Mode. Beast Mode is, like, one of the coolest things I've played in a long time. Because um, there's no good games out right now, except games that were released a long time ago. Recent releases are not good right now. Um, the the only, the only complaint I think they have, which I, I couldn't take away, like, a star or a rating for this because of what it is is if they raise the level cap on beast mode to like 20 or 50 that might be pretty good if they raise the cap on that uh, and I don't think that's worth taking a star away because it's just something they can add it's not like missing any it's not really, really missing anything it's just something that can be tweaked just a little bit kind of like a patch um, but um, I am serious when I say that like almost no good releases have been coming out this year. Well, not not long term good releases. Gears of War three will be played for a long time, even after Modern Warfare three and Battlefield three come out, because of the fanboyism. Um, and not only that, because the game is so polished, and I think that uh, video game value is going down slowly. I just I just smacked a mic. I pimp slapped it. I like pan. But um. <laughs> If you, when it comes to best game that I've played, I really think that Gears of War 3 so far is the best game that I've played this year. 
Um, if it had to be another retail release, it would probably be, uh, God, what was that game called? Freaking, ah, what was it called? I might have to get back to you guys on that. I can't remember. I think it was FIFA. I don't know. I've never played a FIFA game before, right? I played the demo for like two minutes. For two minutes. Freaking loved it. I suck at it so bad. But it's awesome. If <laughs> Post on the comments of this video if you want to see me play FIFA. Because I freaking suck at it. <laughs> it's amazing. Um... And I have to split the retail releases with the arcade releases when I talk about um, what I think the best game is this year. So far, I really like Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages is freaking cool. It's just a like, it's one of those things where it's so weird. You can tell that the developer is a good developer when he can take something that's so weird and turn it into some, such a fun experience, uh, like Rock of Ages is. Um, Rock of Ages, if you don't know, you can download it on the... I know you can download it, download it on the Xbox Game Marketplace in the arcade section. You can download it for, I think, 800 or 1200 I can Google it real fast, but it'd probably take too long. Um, but you can also download the trial. I highly recommend buying that game after you get the trial, so you know, you know uh, if you actually like it. Because it's kind of a strategy, kind of like... It's not like a strategy like Rift or anything, but it's got that same kind of like over third person view, and it's just different. It's really different. I, I, I mean, it might not seem different to you guys if you play something similar, but I have never played anything similar to Rock of Ages. It's amazing to me. Um, but <laughs> I don't know who the developer is, but I think we'll be hearing from them in retail releases that are great. Because they can take something that that that, that little, 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 little. <laughs> they can take something that's that weird. I don't think that's that's proper grammar. That 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 that's oh, no. I don't think so. I have to write that down. But they can take something like that and make it a extremely fun experience. I could play it for hours because I'm freaking laughing all the time. Just because like you can tell a game is good when you're having fun at it. Just because it's broken. Just because a game is broken doesn't mean it's a, it's a bad game. Freaking, I played this game on the GameCube because I, I bought... One of my favorite systems of all time is the GameCube because that's where I learned to play video games on uh, consciously. Uh, consciously. Conscience. My God, I cannot freaking talk. Conscious. Consciously. Conscience. Conscious freaking pizza. I can't freaking talk. All right, well, the GameCube is the uh, basically the thing that learned learned to play video games uh, in a serious manner. Uh, that was the system that I learned to play on. I played on other systems before that, but don't really uh, remember comprehending what was going on and trying to do things. Uh, my parents, my parents, and my brother tell me that when I was like two or three, I used to play the Super Nintendo and used to figure out things that they could not. Like in Super Mario, Super Mario, where I would figure out where tunnels and secret passages and th things like that were, um, but I, I don't remember any of that. Any <clears throat> man, frog in my voice. Uh, I don't remember any any of that. And in the GameCube, I do remember uh, having a strategy. I loved Super Mario Sunshine. Freaking loved that game. I bought the strategy guide to it, and after I beat the game to find out where all the stars were, and I was only like. Five, I, I was only like five years old, so it didn't, it didn't. Um, it's weird to me to know that uh, even now, where I feel like I'm just now getting into games seriously, but I've been an enthusiast since I was five. I've been an enthusiast in this art for a long time. Um, the what was I talking about? The I got a GameCube from a yard sale because I was like, "Oh my God, it's coming back memories! I want my memories back!" So I bought it, and it had like tw twenty games with it. Some of them were crap, like the WWE crap. I, I, it might not be crap to you guys. You guys might have might have enjoyed it, but I didn't. Uh, at the time, I didn't see any enjoyment in bashing a guy's head into the wall, uh, and I do now. But I guess because I played games like that when I was a child, and I didn't, I didn't um, 
It was a first impression, basically. I didn't like it when I was a child, so I don't like it now. But I would like something like Gears of War because it's gritty because I played it now, if that makes sense. But we got the GameCube, and it came with a game. Uh, it was NCAA Basketball. Um, freak, oh God, I forgot. I think it was 2000 and, yeah, 2003. That game is so broken, but it is so much fun. See, it's not a bad game. It can have a flaw, like the director could totally mean something way different. The creators could mean to make the game way different than what they did and totally mess up. But as long as people are having fun with it, who cares? If you if there's a game created and say, yeah, the, say the, the director did fail if it's a storyline, but say it's a game that you just play, it doesn't matter where, whether it's broken. If, as long as it's fun, it doesn't matter. That game is so broken, but it is so fun. On that game, you um, there's like one button, one button to shoot, one button to run, one button to like swipe the ball, and then the like <laughs> it's so bad, <laughs> and the one button to switch between players. If one person gets the ball, there's nothing that you can do because the swipe button never freaking works. <laughs> You just sit there smashing the guy's face with your fist, and you never get any progress. So it's basically a rush to see whoever can get the ball, and they get a point, basically, if they get the ball. It's not fair, but it's freaking fun. Um, That's basically what I mean by that. <laughs> All right, next question. Um, scroll down here. Why are you so gay? Because, okay, uh, got here. Where did you learn to be so cool? Uh, I met a cat named Seymour, and um, he's a pimp. Next question. Where do you see video games going in the next five years? Um, I see. Um, I see the PC advancing a ton, kind of staying in the same like category that it is right now, where you build your PC and blah blah blah. I think they're just gonna uh, upgrade the components. I don't think it's gonna be like um stupid data, like little bitty small com- compact PCs, because I don't think anyone wants. To. I think I think a enthusiast when it comes to electronics likes the idea of wires. Um, likes the idea of there being technology around him, so I don't think that PCs will be moving into a more compact uh, genre when it comes to building them or using them. I don't think that will disappear for the next 20, maybe 10, 20 years. Then it might change a little bit. When it, when it comes to consoles, consoles are all always, um, they're always, uh, what's it called, evolving. The example... The game Rage is apparently going to have three discs, just like Ellie Noir. And um, on the freaking PS3, I think it's supposed to be like an eight-hour inst- install or an eight-gig install. Sorry, heartburn. Ow. But um, <laughs> I got distracted. My dog was barking. Uh, like an eight-gig install or something. And... They're saying that they might need to upgrade consoles soon. I love my Xbox 360, and I mean, I love my PS3 for what it is. I don't use it as much for gaming just because I like. If you uh, even a PS3 control, uh, uh, like fanboy, uh, I'll say a person that uses a PS3 you might not be a fanboy, but you love it. You you know what I mean? You know who I'm talking about? You prefer a PS3 over Xbox 360, just like I prefer. Xbox 360 over PS3. I don't have anything against the other one. I just... <laughs> there's so many things that I can name why I like them, but it'll never uh, compete against an, uh, the other one. Like, the Xbox 360 controller, you can tell when a controller's molded good when you grab it and your hand, it melts inside your hands. Like, not literally melts and drips everywhere, but 
you hold it and every crevice and like bend in your fingers wrap around the controller good and your fingers are right where they need to be it's a well designed controller I, I really think the Xbox 360 did a good job of that the I think the only difference between the PS3 is that PS3 is kind of like a, a twig. You can, uh, it almost it doesn't break easy. It just feels like it can break it easy. Um, but that might be because I'm using a heavy controller, being the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, another thing is another thing about the Xbox 360 versus PS3 controllers is um, the thumbsticks. The only difference between the thumbsticks is their offset. The Xbox 360. Um, imagine the PS3's uh, directional pad and the left thumbstick switched. That's all the Xbox 360's thumbsticks are, except for they're um, they're a little bit different to where they're they are um, the thumbstick pads are inverted to where they pop up instead of they're they go um, outside in instead of they go wait they go inside out and outside in. It's weird. I'm not going to explain it, but. When it comes to consoles, they're always evolving. I think uh, I really think the con- the Kinect and motion control is just something they think is awesome. Like I bought a Wii, right? I bought my Wii. <laughs> I bought a Nintendo Wii. We'll say it like that. And it's it's cool for a little while. It's cool for like two months. You play it for a little for a little bit, and then it's like you know this is cool, but it's like TV. People got over TV after like a year when it came out. They're like, okay, it's a TV. What's next? You know, people get kind of bored. It's still awesome. It's just people get used to it. The Connect is exactly like that. The Connect, I thought was amazing. I wanted one. I was like, God, I am going to buy one. I bought one. And a little bit after getting all the, like, getting achievements and crap and the Connect Sports and Connect Adventures, I don't use it anymore. I don't even use it for the motion control and, like, doing anything. I think it was just a thing for Microsoft to say that they're doing better at, they have better technology and they're moving forward faster. Um, <laughs> I think it's really just not a, it's not a gimmick, but but it's them trying to progress in technology in the wrong direction. I do I do believe that if consoles are not going to turn into the Wii compared to um, PC, then they obviously need to upgrade everything in them. In, in them. In them, in them, in them. In them. Um, I've took a... I've taken a look, not at the PS3's and internal um, speculations, but I have looked at the Xbox 360's speculations. It has, uh, I know that all Xbox 360's are ran by NVIDIA graphics cards, and they have 3 gig- gigabytes of RAM, physical memory, um, and then hard drive varies on which package you buy. Uh, and then, like, dual whispers, fans, and stuff like that. Not really that crazy, but, you know, it's it's like a good uh, halfway PC. It's like something you can get a laptop. It makes sense why they would have to dumb them down, is what I mean. Um, the way I think of the, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 is PS3, better hardware, and the Xbox 360 has better software. The PS3 is not user friendly and it's not fun at all. The interface is not. The Xbox 360 has a better interface. It's easy to use, has way more features and compatibility. Um, and the the P the PS3 I think uh, the PS3 doesn't. I, th- I think uh, when they were creating it, they were thinking that they were going to make the best home entertainment system ever. But they ended up drifting away from the fact that they were needing to make a game system. Like they still added everything they needed to, to like it be a game system, but I think they dr- drifted away. F- like they were saying, "Hey, let's pack everything into this," but they didn't think about how people are going to access it. Um, you know, easily. <laughs> I'm stuttering so bad. They didn't think about how people were going to react when they have it. Um, I think if you're you own the PS3, then you you understand what I'm 
talking about. My God, my recording just went crazy. Um, then you understand what I'm talking about. It doesn't, it's not really bad. It's just hard to use. Um, but I do see consoles and stuff moving forward in the next couple years because they'll need to. It's always needing to upgrade because developers, developers, because the little bit, big bit, well, <laughs> developers can pretty much do anything they want. And, um, my God, my voice just changed. <laughs> God. Developers can um, basically do anything they want. They can make a game very polished and everything, but they're have, they're limited. Even the the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, which I th- they are saying can be played on the Wii U. I'm kind of what I'm like. I'm like troll face. What face? When it comes to that, because I don't know what they mean. Um, but Skyrim, I, I, I'm freaking mad that I forgot his name. He's one of my favorite. Div- Is it Rob Talbert? No, 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 no. That's Machinima. Um, he's the uh, head guy over at um, over at uh, Bethesda or Bethesda, whatever you want to call it, or whatever the mother company. No, Zenicon. What? Hold on. Let me look at my. Let me look at my Fallout. New Vegas. Uh, Obs- no, it's not Obsidian. Uh, Zenimax, Zenimax, and Bethesda Softworks. Yes, that guy. You see him in all the Elder Scrolls. Uh, like he's he's the one, like the spokesperson. One of my favorite developers of, of all time. That guy is one of my favorite directors of all time. Mainly because he can, he understands that. Like he, when I say he, I mean him rep- representing the entire company. Can they understand that they can? make anything they want to uh, according to what technology they have at hand. The thing the thing about uh, Skyrim is they even he said it that they were wanting when it when it came to Morrowind or wait no um Oblivion. Oblivion. They were wanting to not polish it as much and put it out with the Xbox three sixty. But they said no we're going to um, we're gonna put it out uh, polished after the thing came, after the Xbox 360 came out in the holiday season. They were going to lose money because it wasn't going to be in the holidays. They put it out like two weeks later, two months later. I'm not sure. Um, and it still was one of the best selling Xbox 360 games to date. I mean the Xbox, not Xbox 360. I'm sorry. Um. It might have been the Xbox 360. I'm, not, I'm I'm freaking retarded <laughs> right now. Um, but they're saying that Skyrim, they were wanting to wait until the next generation of consoles came out to just go ahead and program for that. But they're saying that right now, what they've like got gotten done already because of what they're basing the game for that this current generation of consoles is okay. That they're going to put it out on this current generation of consoles. My voice is cracking so much. I hate it. Um, <laughs> my God, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> the <laughs> I need to end this soon. I'm I'm getting hysterical. He's saying that it can be played on the current generation of consoles. That there's no reason to upgrade right now. Uh, now I can see that happening because I think there's a little bit more potential left in these generation of consoles. I don't think they're totally dead yet. Uh, I do think that they need to start working on something soon, but I think they should give it another year or two. Year late, like late 2012. Uh, I think we should probably hear something early 2012 on what they're producing and see it in like the next year or two. But yes, um, that's basically what I think on that subject. Um, the uh, let's take the final question. <laughs> oh my god. Um, the Nosus Kabashus. Nauseous. Hold on. Is that an N? Hold on. We're not gonna we're not gonna use that. He's just asking if I'm gay. 
He said, why are you gay, bro? Okay, hold on. Let me look through here to find a question. Mr. Cod uh two four nine says um who made your background uh i think i've already answered this but this way but this way you get a shout out in my video <laughs> shout out to mr Kai 249 he wants to know um who made my background my background actually hand drew uh on a sketch paper and i was like you know this is what my Channel was gonna look like, but then, um, but then I went into Sony, uh, what's it called, freaking Photoshop, yeah, Adobe Photoshop, and b basically I didn't scan, but I basically like hand drew everything again in Photoshop, and then I put in like things that I thought about myself, like I suck at video games, um, I, I don't, and the way my channel says uh, that I suck at video games. By the way, I don't think I finished the last question. I made my background. I hand drew it and then copied it um, from in, in Photoshop. Um, but when I say that I suck at video games, I don't. I'm saying basically that I'm not great at one game. I'm mediocre at a lot of games, which I I rather be mediocre at a lot of games than just beast mode at one, um, because Huh, well, Kevin1811 wants me to join him on Left 4 Dead 2. Um, if I'm mediocre in a lot, of, a lot of different games, then you can have fun in every game that you play. But uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, it's been been recording for like 32 minutes now. So if you... <laughs> it's almost 33. So if you like enjoyed this podcast and if you want some more, you want some more, baby, then... <laughs> make sure you like this video if you want more of these podcasts if you don't then just tell me you don't like them um, and if you have any questions for me please follow me on twitter and uh, when I'm ready for another Q&A I will post it on twitter that I'm needing Q&A questions give me your Q&A questions I will answer them I will answer as many questions as I can in a 30 minute slot so it's like a hundred or so something like that yeah <laughs> But um, that's about it, guys. Um, <laughs> remember, if you enjoyed the video, like it. If you just have to see the video again, you just freaking love it. Leave a favorite. And <laughs> if you have something to say to me, you want me to answer it in my next, next podcast, leave a comment on this video. Give me a private message on, on YouTube. Or leave me a tweet on my Twitter I will leave my Twitter account in uh, the description and follow me on Twitter for more news and updates. You can see my uh, what I'm posting for open lobbies and all kinds of crap. So that's about it, guys. And I will see you guys later. I love you. <laughs>